So in this video, I'm going to run you through some of the common operations that you would do on a file system, but achieve these using Node.js code. So traditionally, accessing files, or at least files on the local computer, is something that hasn't been able to be done with JavaScript. And this makes sense because if you've got code running in the browser, you don't know exactly where it's come from, and you don't want that code to have access to all of the files on your local machine. But with Node.js, our code is running on our own machine and it's run by us and we do want the ability to access and interact with files. So another Node.js core module is the file system module and that lets us do just that. So we're going to import that module and then run through some common tasks that you would do with files. So I've just created a new JavaScript file and called it files.js and in here I'm going to import the file system module and store it in a variable called fs. So with our file system module imported, let's do one of the most common tasks that you would need to do, which is to read the contents of a file. And the function we can achieve that with is read file sync. Now without going off on too much of a tangent here, Node.js actually provides two ways of interacting with a file system, either asynchronously or synchronously, which basically means will the function actually halt the execution of your program? And generally it's good to use asynchronous methods, but just for the purposes of keeping this tutorial simple, I'll stick with the blocking synchronous methods. So to read a file, we simply pass in a file name. So let's just access one of the other files that we created in a previous lesson, so system.js. And this will actually return the contents of that file. So I'm going to capture that and store it into a variable. So I'll say const data and assign it the result of that. And if we actually log that out to the console and run the program, you see we don't get back exactly the contents of the file. It's actually returned in a buffer. And we will be covering buffers in a later lesson, but for now, if we actually want to get the text that's stored within that file, we simply call another method on the data that's returned, which is to string. And if you remember in our system.js file from the previous lesson, the last thing that we did was to log out a environment variable that we created. So that's the simple way of reading a file and outputting its value. What about if we want to actually create a new file? Well, the function we use for that is write file sync. So here I'm calling the write file sync function and I'm passing it in a file name and some text to store in it. And because we don't need to worry about returning a value from this, we don't need to assign this to a variable. So let's run the program again. And you can see we don't get any output on the console, but if you look in our explorer on the left hand side, you'll see we've created a new file, data.txt, and if we just inspect the contents of that, we see the string that we passed into that function. Okay, so we can read and write two files, but what about if we want to actually just append some more data into that data.txt file? <clears throat> well, we simply just replace the write part of the function with append. And if we run files.js again, and if we go back over to data.txt, you can see we've got our original message with another message appended to it. So this is useful if we don't want to overwrite the existing file or create a new one, but we just want to add some new data into an existing file. Let's take a look at how we would copy a file. So similar to the copy command on the command line, the copy file sync function takes the original file and then a new file name that we're going to copy it into. So running files.js again, you can see in the explorer that we've got a new file of, which is a copy of the original data.txt. So copying files is straightforward enough. What about if we want to actually rename that file? So here I'm going to use the rename file sync function and I'm going to rename the data.bak.txt file to data.old.txt. And if we run files.js again, Oh, whoops, it's not rename file sync, it's just rename sync. So just remove the file from that and we'll run that again. And you can see that we don't have data.bak.txt anymore, we've just got the data.old.txt. So let's say we don't need that backup file anymore, that copy of the original data file. We want to delete it and we can do that just by using the unlink function. So that'll be unlink sync. And we'll remove the data.old.txt file. So let's run files.js again, and you can see that file's now been removed. So that's pretty much most of the common operations for working with files, but there are a few other things that you can do with directories that you might want to know about, such as reading the contents of a directory and making a new one. So let's look at how to read the contents of a directory. 
So the read dir sync function actually gives us a list of files in a particular directory. And note that the dir is all lowercase. So within the parentheses for this function, we need to actually tell it which directory we want to read. And if you remember from the last lesson, there's a special variable which is just dir name, which points to the current directory that the program is running in. So we'll store the result of that into a variable, and I'm just going to log that out to the console when files.js runs. And let's run it now. And there you can see we get an array with all of the files that are in the directory that we specified, which in this case is the current directory. So you can imagine that's really useful if you want to loop through all of the files that are in a particular directory and perform some certain action on them. And that read dir sync function actually formats them quite nicely into an array for us to do that. So what about if we want to create a new directory? Well, we can use the mkdir sync function for that. And here I'll just create a new one called file system. And when I run the program, you can see in the explorer that I've got a new folder or directory called file system. And whilst we're looking at different directories, what about if I want to actually move a file into that directory? Well, we actually just use the same function that we did for renaming a file, but just pass in as a second parameter the path that we want to store it in. So something like this. So when I run files.js again, Oh, and I think I've put a full stop instead of a comma there, so let me just change that and run it one more time. So you can see that data.txt has disappeared because it's now living in the file system folder. So there's one last function that I'd like to show you before we finish up this tutorial, and that is to actually watch files for changes. So the file system module actually provides us with a function called watch file, and we give it a file that we want to watch. So let's just look at the file system data.txt file that we just moved. And this function will basically look for any changes that happen to that file. And what happens when some changes occur is the function here that we pass in as a callback actually gets executed. So if we just do something simple saying like when a change occurs, just log out a message saying data file was changed. Although in reality, we might want to do something a bit more complicated. And if I just run files.js again, you'll see that the node program doesn't actually complete. It's still sitting there. It's, it's running in the background. And if we actually go and make some changes to that data.txt file, and when I hit save, you'll see we get that message in the console letting us know that the data file was changed. So that's it for this lesson. Hopefully now you can start working with the file system on your local computer with Node.js. And we'll carry on in the next lesson looking at events and how to handle those within Node.js.